Today we are meal prepping for weight loss. So I want to share with you how I meal prep to stay consistent in this weight loss game. Um, diet is 80% of your weight loss. So if you are slacking in the kitchen, I can almost guarantee you are not seeing your fullest potential with your results. So let me share with you some really great, easy meal prep ideas that are delicious, that are fresh, that are homemade, that you can cook once and eat throughout the week and they are still gonna be so good. The first thing we are going to prep together is our chicken. So I like to do, I shared this recipe with you guys before, but I've never made it with you guys. This is a rendition of chicken thinga, which is like a shredded chicken. The difference that we are doing with this one is we are making a homemade green salsa. So like a salsa verde, if that's what you would like to call it. But the difference for me, and I really feel like the flavor saver, the flavor maker here is going to be a clove, a whole head, okay? I just cut off the top of garlic. And what we are going to do is we are going to roast this garlic in the oven for a few, and then we are going to add in our other ingredients. So I want you to preheat your oven at four and a quarter, take your clove of garlic, top, like chop off the head, you're gonna take a thing of oil, and you're going to add in your garlic to the foil and then you're going to add in just a little bit of oil this is some avocado oil i put mine over the top of it make sure you get some good garlic too okay and then you just wrap it <coughs> so you leave it like that And I'm actually gonna start this early because this is gonna go in the crock pot. This is a crock pot meal. But um, this this part, this garlic is gonna take a little bit longer. But the other ingredients is, just so you guys know, we're gonna need some fresh tomatillos. These are like, these are what they look like. Okay, and then you take off this covering and then you're left with these. So we're gonna need some of those. You're gonna need a onion you're gonna need a couple jalapenos I have two because I like mine to have a little kick and you're also gonna need some fresh lemons and you're going to need some cilantro and that's it but first before we add those other things which I'll show you you're gonna want to throw your head of garlic into the oven and let it roast for about 45 minutes in the foil and then we'll add in these when we're ready so into the oven the so our garlic has been going about 30 minutes or so um i let it go honestly for i can let it be in there for an hour um and just do it like that but i'm gonna go through and we're gonna start getting our tomatillos ready so remember i told you this like skin will come off you're gonna peel that right off. I give mine a rinse because it has like a sticky texture to it. I don't remember how many I bought the other day yesterday when I went. Oopsie. Um, also, this green salsa that we're making, honey, it's salsa. So you can put it on top of your chicken, your pork, anything. But also, I make a little bit too much so I can just throw it in a bowl and like the kids and Leo eat that with like tortilla chips. We eat it on top of other meals. It's just a really nice, fresh salsa that you're making, right? Now, did you, could you skip this and get like a can of like green salsa or something and throw it in your crock pot? Yeah, you could. You could skip all this and not be extra, but I think there's something really nice about a fresh homemade salsa that just makes the meal that much better. And this is one of those recipes too where like, when will you not need a nice fresh salsa recipe? And when is it not nice to know what ingredients are going into your food? So I try to keep things as, you know, like flavorful. Cause I feel like that's where people find issues with following recipes or following a meal plan or a structured eating is they get bored, right? They get bored, like, I don't want to eat this anymore. I'm sick of the same thing. Are my proteins always the same? Yeah, chicken, fish, 
stuff like that but the way I dress them up and season them are what kind of keep me keep this spark alive if you will so these are cleaned off I'm gonna throw these on my pan whole jalapenos going right on the pan now I am going to add in an onion all right, so here's my pan. I got my my tomatillos, I got my onion halves, and my jalapeno, right? And then right here is the garlic. I'm gonna take the avocado oil. I'm just gonna give everything a nice little coat. You could skip this. I'm gonna bake mine at four and a quarter because I wanna go and finish my cardio because I'm also working out at home today. Um, so it gives it a little bit more time, right? I just kind of run them through with my hands make sure everything's covered now if you wanted to make this a little bit spicier you could even do serrano peppers which I try to do sometimes but my kids won't eat it if it's too spicy you're gonna want these to get soft and you want them to get a nice like charcoal crisp on them it's gonna be really good but if you wanted to like make it quicker you could set these to broil on high um, and do it that way but I wanted to like I said I need a little extra time this morning so um, into the oven 425 and just check on them like every 10 minutes or so um, you're gonna have to flip them upside down and stuff like that but it'll it'll usually takes about 20 ish half an hour quickly I wanted to jump in here and I wanted to share with you guys some of my new favorite self-care items now you guys know I am self-care queen when it comes to my self-care I like to do it at home on my own time and I like to do it like in a way where I can do high maintenance things to keep me low maintenance but also try to do it in a realistic budget so Brio sent over two different items that I have to share with you guys because I know y'all are going to lose it now the first thing is going to be this scalp massager look at this you apply it to your scalp I love this not only is it giving the pulsing to the scalp but it also has red light. And then a bonus is if you see right here, let me turn this off real quick so I can show you. You see right here, you're able to put any like serums or anything you want in here. So for example, I use a um, hair growth serum on my roots and I could put that in here and make sure that when I'm applying it, it's going directly to my root and massaging in there along with the red light. So two in one. So with the massaging, as you can see, and then you see that red light, this is going to help promote hair regrowth. So if you are like me and you like doing all the hair masks and everything because you want your hair to be healthy, that's all fine and well. That will do something for the bottoms, maybe the dry end, but if you're truly trying to grow out your hair, the most important part of that is your scalp health, and that's where this Brio device is going to come in. Also, it just feels really good. If you're like, my self-soothing is I like scratch my head. I love when people scratch my head. I love people play with my hair. So to do this, to have this just and I could just go throughout, honey. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Also, Leo really loves it too because he loves for me to scratch his hair. You don't have to worry about this tangling either because this is tangle free. It doesn't promote any static as well. The red light is also going to help with uh, scalp health and growth and all of that and it's really going to stimulate that hair follicle to grow in and again if you're doing any hair growth serums you can just apply it that way and you can make sure it is really getting in there you're really going to want to focus on your scalp health and just promoting that um, regeneration and that is what this does and it feels so good this is super light so you don't have to worry about it being like heavy and like weighing your arm down. It feels so good. You guys remember I told you, I'm like, man, they need to come out with something that's going to like rub my head. And this is it. Um, I do have a couple rows of extensions in, so I don't put them on my tracks, but I put them all around and I love it. It feels so good. And it's such a nice way to kind of pamper yourself at home. And I also want you guys to hear how quiet that is. Isn't that so freaking cool? Like technology is so amazing to me. So it does help, like I said, with the scalp serum application, you can put it directly into this part and it will apply these serums directly to the scalp and help massage them in so you get the full benefit of using the scalp treatment. And then the actual hands, you can do different speeds and it's super quiet as well. And the way this needs helps just promote circulation. It's restful. 
it just feels really good. I think I'm going to get one of these for my sister-in-law because when the girls go over, she always has them like scratch her head. And she's like, rub my head, rub my head. So I think this is a great gift. I have a discount code. I'll leave it down below, but this is awesome. I think I charged it for like maybe half an hour and I've been using it all the time. So the battery life is super long and it's super light and compatible. You could travel with it. And I think it's just a really good way to pamper yourself at home. And I think you guys would love this. So Brio neck massager, or it's called the, the, the Brio Deep Massager. Now you guys know I love these things. I've shared tons of these with you before. This one, the design for me is what is really setting it off. So if you look right here, it has these bars all around it. You know why? Because it manipulates actually the hands. You know how if you ever get a massage, they'll grip and grasp and like kind of pull. It's not so much the rubbing where the traditional ones you see where it's just kind of rubbing going around in a circle. This one actually will grasp the back of your neck and it massages it and pulls it. And it does the same thing for your lower neck too, which I love. And they designed it purposely like that so you can feel like you're getting a massage by a real life person and it's not just a machine. And also what I like is it has this strap on here. So when you put it on, it kind of, you can keep it held down and you don't have like all those things over there. So it stays put. I like that. I think that's also a really smart idea. And I'm somebody who uses the heck out of these things. So that was really good. And this pad right here that you actually rust is very, very soft which is also very nice. It has a built-in lithium pack and it is designed to be like a backpack kind of design so you can be hands-free while enjoying your massage, which we love, especially if we are busy moms, dads, workers, whoever. And it's really quiet as well, so you can bring it to the office with you, especially if you get like tech snack or working really hard right now because it's that really busy time of the year, closing up books. This will help alleviate any of that neck strain. You could do it at your office. It's really nice and comfortable and quiet. You can massage multiple body parts, your neck, your shoulders at the same time, and you can even do it on your back, your waist, and your legs. And it also has a hot compress that hits the back of the neck and it goes up to 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit with a constant temperature within 50 seconds of just starting up the machine. This massager is lighter and smaller than some that you will see. The lining is washable so you can keep it clean and sanitary. It is a low volume so you can bring it to the office and nobody will hear ya. And it has two massaging areas for the neck and the shoulders, two massage strengths, two massaging modes, soft and strong, and a timing function. And it is wireless and can be used up to seven to ten times on a single charge, which it's called fashion. All right. You guys see how it like grips? It like pulls your neck back. Yeah. And then you could heat it up because you know you're supposed to if the muscles are real tight and i'm forever straining i'm just closing my eyes like, mm -hmm. i keep trying to crack my neck which is awful so i keep sh pulling my neck right so i'm always either putting heat or cold on it look at that oh my god this was a brilliant idea I'm gonna leave a discount code for all this stuff down below. Thank you, Brio, for sending this over. Okay, I just got, this is gonna not sound like a, a really big triumph, but I just did a min, uh, ran a mile in 13 minutes. That's pretty good for somebody like myself. So 15 minutes, that means I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flip these. See, like that's the color we want. So we're getting there. We're getting there. They're gonna be, you can see this is the color that they originally are. They're gonna get to a, like, I wanna say a darker shade of green. All right, I lost track of time because I was watching this TikTok and it had me crying. But <laughs> anyways, this is our stuff here. So this one, we're just gonna throw everything in. I have my blender right here. So grab your, Tomatillos, which are still fine, even though some of them blew up. Again, I usually put these on broil, but today I just slow cook them. But they're nice and soft, as you can see. Some of them popped up. Doesn't matter. I'm going to take our onion. We're going to throw that in there. Everything goes in here, okay? So this is what I want to show you, okay? That's what it looks like. You're going to take, you have, this is my blender, right? 
I want you guys to see you literally you're just going to squeeze and this extra step is what's going to separate this bomb ass meal from everything else this has been sitting in my fridge this is just a head of cilantro literally just take the tops off throw that in here the juice of a lime the juice of a lime you could always add more lime afterwards i think we'll do two limes actually let's do two limes the juice of two limes so you're going to add that right to your your mix here again you guys this is your salt it's basically i'm showing you how to make a fresh green salsa but we're going to use this as our chicken we're going to add in some salt okay salt to taste and then because it wouldn't be a dingyang holy shit it wouldn't be a dingyang recipe without some nor chicken bouillon we're gonna add in about mm, like a half a teaspoon you will notice i have no water in here you do not want to add any water when you're cooking this chicken because this chicken is going to give off some water you could add it to the salsa to, to loosen it up because it's going to be a little thick all right and so we're going to turn on our blender here and you can see it's nice and hot right so what i like to do is i will get a spoon out and i just test it all right just give it a little a nice green salsa right you could see all the different the cilantro the color is good it smells really good you know what i actually think it's okay I think it's okay we're gonna leave it okay so i'm not gonna add anything to it if you wanted i tasted it i thought it tastes good for us like i know what my family likes but if it's too limey too spicy you need more salt you need more chicken bouillon if it's too hot um mind you with the chicken the chicken's gonna release water so it isn't gonna be as spicy this does have a little kick to it but it's nothing too crazy right um what i have is six boneless chicken this is boneless skinless chicken breasts in my crock pot I'm just going to dump this right over that, okay? And then I res like I said, I reserve the little bit that's left because we're going to use that as a salsa. And that's it. Throw this in your crock pot on high or on so mine my chicken breast is slightly frozen. I usually like to do this where it's slightly frozen or completely frozen so chicken breast doesn't get mushy in the crock pot. That's one of my family's biggest complaints with any crock pot meal is it turns mushy. So for the chicken to not get mushy, I like to have it either frozen or a little bit um frozen. And then I cook it on high for about four or five hours until I can shred it and then we take it off and that's it. So throw that in the crock pot and reserve this little bit that's left and they, they could have it for snacks later. Working on sides, let me tell you what our sides are gonna be this week. We are going to make some jasmine rice. Usually I'll do like the like Spanish inspired, but I feel like I'm kind of tired of that. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I just, I've overdone it with that. So I wanted to change it up. So we're going to do it like a lime cilantro rice, kind of inspired by like Chipotle. Leo likes it. I enjoy it. So we're going to make that. I'm only going to do one cup. So um, that's all we're going to do. It's actually really simple. I do mine a little bit differently than you may see like the Chipotle recipe, but just take one cup of rice for me to two cups of water. We're going to cook that up. I'm also going to do a smashed potato. Now I have these potatoes because I got them on sale. Potatoes have been on sale again. So um, these are the uh, golden potatoes. I really like these. So what I'm actually going to do with these is I'm going to boil them in water. And I'm kind of inspired, right? I've seen a recipe for it and I thought I could kind of make it like appropriate for me and like my family. So I'm going to boil them till they're soft. Okay. And then I'm going to smash them down and season them and throw them into the oven and bake them so they get crispy for like a half an hour or so. And that's going to be a side for us as well. So we'll see how that goes. This is going to be the first time. It might be a flop. It might be great. We're going to see how it works. And then I'm also just going to cook up some plain pasta. So I get to have as my carb sources throughout the week, pasta, potatoes, and rice. So this week I'm going to cook all three just so I can mix and match. 
and I have really, really busy work week. Leo's really busy with work as well, so I want to make sure I have enough food that's prepped for him um, to take away for school. The girls have a lot going on with school and after school activities this week. We're just super busy, so I want to make sure all this stuff is done so there's always something cooked in the fridge. Um, we're also going to make some T-bone steaks. I have three of them. They're really big. I actually only really eat this portion. That's the leanest, and then Leo and the kids eat that, so... That's kind of my little way of doing it. I think I'm going to see if Leo wants to cook them because he prefers to cook the steaks, which I don't mind because, you know, you can mess up a steak and they're not cheap. And we're also going to cook up some tilapia. But let's start on these sides real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my rice and get the one cup of rice cooking. And I'm going to throw these potatoes in the pot and start getting them cooked down because these are going to take a hot minute to cook. So, And I'm leaving the skin on because these golden potatoes have the thinnest. I do want to add that I did add in about a half a uh, tablespoon of nor chicken bouillon to the potato water and about a half a teaspoon of nor chicken bouillon to the rice water. Just because I like for my food to have flavor, honey. Do not be afraid to season your food. Season your food. I feel like that is where we are finding our faults with meal prepping and trying to, you know, kind of clean up our eating. I feel like, first off, we alienate food groups, which is a whole other problem for a whole other video. But I feel like we're afraid of seasoning because we think everything just has to be seasoned with a little bit of like pink Himalayan salt and that's it. No, baby. Season it and season it well and season it good, okay? Enjoy your food. Enjoy it, okay? You're lucky to be able to have food, right? Make sure it tastes good. So this is getting ready to go. We're going to give this a couple stirs. And this is the one cup of rice that's being cooked. So here is that rice all cooked up. Remember, to cook rice, 15 minutes, bring it to a boil, turn it on low, keep it covered 15 minutes, do not touch it. Once 15 minutes hits, turn it off, still not touching it, and let it sit for another 15 minutes. Boom, perfect rice every time. Secret is, is not touching it. Anyways, I have a whole head of cilantro chopped up right here. I am going to sprinkle that in. I don't want to put too much, so we may not need all this, but I might use the rest of that chopped up cilantro for my salmon any or my tilapia, so it's not going to go to waste. But I don't want like a whole bunch in there either. It's kind of seasoning it to your desire, and I think that looks pretty good. I'm cooking a smaller batch of rice just because I'm going to have pasta and potatoes as well, so keep that in mind. So like I said, you could always make more. It's not super duper hard or anything like that. So I think that's good. And then I am going to take the zest. So basically just zesting the skin of two limes. And then I think I might only need the juice of one lime. Sorry, my kids are at their grandparents' house and, you know, they don't talk to me when they're home, but when they're out, they got to bother me all the time. And then, yeah, so the zest of two limes, the juice of one, and then we're going to season it probably with just a little bit of salt. So the potatoes are still going. Those potatoes are going to boil for probably, I imagine, close to an hour. So we're only halfway there. Just check them. I just checked mine um, and I want to be able to smash them with a fork. So they got to be pretty soft. Basically, we're cooking them in the, we're boiling them to cook them, and then we're only going to put them in the oven to brown them and give them a little bit of a crisp. So when you're zesting, you just want to get to the white. You just want to take basically the color portion. If you don't have lime, you can do lemon as well. I just like the way lime tastes better with this, but I love lemon as well. Funny enough, when I was pregnant with my oldest daughter, I used to eat lemon wedges with seasoning salt. It was so good. And then give it a squeeze. All the lime, some salt. And then we're gonna do some garlic. I got this little like seasoning shelf that goes on the side of my stove now that I got from Ikea. Game changer. Like 15 bucks best thing i bought all year okay just make that sure that's stirred you don't want to bite into a big old chunk of salt or anything else it's kind of sticky but that's okay i think it could use more lime but if i put more lime leo won't like it so we're just gonna leave it like that and then go from there but look at that all the colors oops texture 
perfect. No, not yet. They're still pretty hard. So I want to put it to where my fork can just kind of go right through it. And it's not the case. The, I just took a potato out and this was a big one. And I wanted to show you what I mean. I just have a fork and we're going to smash it. I guess maybe I should have made them a little bit smaller. So each side, I guess, is going to vary. But I had two pans, like two baking sheet pans. But I'm not going to lie, the other day I made something and... I ruined it because I got marshmallow dried up on there. So we might do two batches. So I'm going to go through, like I said, and I'm just going to smash these. I got my oven preheating at 325. We're going to do some pepper. This is just some fresh cracked pepper. Again, season the hell out of these guys. They can add um, butter if they want when they're done. And then here is the garlic salt with parsley. We're gonna add that and just give it a nice seasoning. Right? I'm gonna add some more garlic because we gotta keep them vampires away. And remember in the water with the potatoes, we did add in a little bit of nor chicken bouillon and i wanted to add some rosemary i like rosemary with potatoes thyme's really good too i like sage as well i like a lot of these like real savory herbs during this time of the year mm. and then some cheddar i won't have cheese on mine because i'm dairy free but just a little a little pinch if you will add that to everything just adding little pinches of some cheddar on there. And then I figured they can put a little dollop of sour cream. It's different than like mashed potatoes. I don't know. I'm just trying to be as creative as possible, you know, make things a little fun and interesting. If it doesn't work, then you guys seen it doesn't work and you don't try it. I mean, I guess I could probably edit this out, but I feel like this is also the reality of you know, learning how to cook and trying new recipes and, you know, you kind of figure it out. So this is what they are looking like. So again, these are already cooked, these potatoes. We're just going to throw them in the oven for probably about 15, 20 minutes. So they get kind of crispy, kind of crunchy. The cheese melts. We'll see how it turns out. I forgot I bought this immersion blender. <laughs> Ray has been using it to make like desserts and stuff. But anyways, we are going to use this and we're going to make homemade mashed potatoes. And I just took the rest of the potatoes that were in there and a little bit of the water from in the pot that I used to boil them in. And I'm just mashing these down, skin and everything. So we'll have two choices. We'll have some nice creamy mashed potatoes that I'm going to season up after this. And also, guys, this is a really great way to make your mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving. Um, and we're going to season them, and then we can have mashed potatoes, or we can have the crispy potato, like, little smush things, you know? Again, just giving options, not only for me, but for my family. And my family loves, like, mashed potatoes, but they love for them to be really creamy. And I'm not adding any milk to these, so they're going to be okay. Look at how good they look. Look at that. And these are so creamy. Make sure you reserve a little bit of that starchy potato water and throw it in here because it really helps blend them. But look, nice. They're thick. They're nice thick, but they're not lumpy. That immersion blender is, whoopsie, is bomb. I did keep the skin on, but remember to clean your potatoes. I seasoned it with salt, um, a little bit of salt, garlic salt with parsley, rosemary, garlic, and black pepper. And season it however you like it. Now, if Leo and the kids have it, they'll probably add a little dollop of butter. You can throw butter in here if that's what you like. You can throw bacon bits in here. I mean, you can really, really jazz this up however you like. But my point is, is that you can eat mashed potatoes. You can eat rice. You can eat pasta. You can have a steak. You can eat pretty much everything in moderation. Okay, I've been eating all of these carbs throughout the last almost year and a half of this journey for me. 
You guys have seen how I've transformed my body. And not only did I transform my body, I transformed my relationship with food. Okay? And I know, again, we're not keep, we're trying to keep things a little exciting, so we're trying different ways. You know, I know it's colder. You're looking for more, you know, stick to the ribs, you know, uh, comfort food. And I feel like nothing says comfort food, like some good cheesy potatoes or some mashed potatoes, some steak, all that stuff. All right, so there is the potato wedges. When I tell you, they smell amazing. And look at how good they look. Um, let me try to flip them up. So you're just gonna, and then you just serve it like that. And then they can put a dollop of whatever they want on there. So if they wanna do like a dollop of sour cream, some um, butter, Go ahead and do that as well but they look so good and there's like some bigger portions so just a little something different even if you had some fresh chives or even some bacon bits it's basically like a smashed baked potato it's kind of the thought behind it but i think it looks really good so those are done so we have these we have mashed potatoes we have rice we have cooked pasta chicken is going i'm going to work on the rest of our proteins I am going to start on my tilapia. So I have them right here. I make smaller batches. These fillets are freaking huge. I don't know why they're this big, but nonetheless, I have my pan warming up. I just have a little bit of avocado oil at the bottom to coat it, give it a nice little crisp. And then I like to use this. This is the spicy chili lime seasoning. I got this, I believe, at Costco. It's very good. It is spicy. It has a little bit of a kick. I don't think too much, but I put this on my chicken too. I enjoy it. And then I am going to use the remainder of the cilantro, and then I am going to give it the juice of a fresh lime. So I'm Leah will eat a little bit of the tilapia, nothing too crazy. I make sure I give it a nice, good seasoning. Big ass tilapia fillet. And then I go through again on the other side. Give it a nice cover. I'm gonna sprinkle on some of that cilantro. I try to use as much fresh ingredients as I can, when I can, you know. Give it the squeeze of the lime. You could zest another lime too if you wanted to, but I feel like this is sufficient for me, but you can do what you want to do. And then I'll add, when I flip, I'll add more cilantro to the other side and then, um, you know, repeat. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm only making, like I said, two fillets, but they're big. I roughly eat about a pound of meat a day, which sounds crazy but that's just about it. So I only make a small, let me bring you up. For myself, I make a small amount of tilapia because I'm usually the only one who will eat it. And I'll try to like switch it up. But for that chicken, I did make a little bit extra, but my mom goes crazy for it. So does my dad. So I'm actually gonna send her some and so does Leo's mom and dad. So um, it is a little bit much and that is going to go a long way but it's really, really good. With that chicken, you could also serve it like on nachos and have like nachos with it. You can do fajitas, you can do tostadas. Um, I like to even put my, I'll eat it by itself with just some rice or I'll do it um, over a salad and have like a salad with it. It's super universal. Yeah, let's cook this tilapia. I feel like I'm talking a lot for the most basic things, but you know. I cleaned up this morning because I knew you guys were coming over, just so you know. Because in my head, I feel like you guys are actually in my house. So I was like, man, I got the girls coming over today. Let me clean up and mop and make sure the bathroom is clean. So if you guys got to use the bathroom, it's, it's clean, it's open. I'm crazy. Look at the beautiful, purple, like, crispy edges. Leo just sharpened the knife. I'm like, it just got me so good. And it's like the thinnest cut, but... Anyways, look at how beautiful this tilapia looks. And I love when I could add the fresh like cilantro and stuff. I feel like it just gives it a nice fresh taste. 
and add just a little bit something extra to it. So um, I'm almost done with the tilapia and then we will start on the steak. All right, so here is that steak. What I did do is I went through and like chopped off all this like gristle and stuff because you can't eat that. But that's what the steak looks like. We're gonna season it with Gibson's. That's our favorite. And then you just kind of like press it down. So I have my cast iron skillet heating up. Okay, hope that's not too much. So I'm gonna ruin the steaks. Anyways, I have my cast iron skillet heating up and Leo says I have to get it real hot. Okay, it's ready. Oh. I'm in danger. <laughs> That's what I feel like. Okay, and then he said about three minutes each side. I'm just doing the stretch Armstrong thing where I'm like halfway across the kitchen. All right, so uh, Alexa, set timer for three minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't play. I don't play about my timer, okay? And then I have to hit, can you give me the uh, thermometer out of the door, please? Yep, that red one. You see it? And then, so he said three minutes, two to three minutes each side, and then make sure the internal temperature is like 125, 130, and then let it sit out. I need to go change this battery. Be right back. Perfection, 125.4. So that's what the steak is looking like. We're just gonna let it sit now. And it's about seven minutes grand total cooking time. So super quick, just make sure your skillet is nice and hot and just take your time and make sure you have a little thermometer. So you can see the temperature is rising because as it sits, it's gonna cook in its own juices. Okay? Okay, good job. Ooh, we're cooking. Now I took out all the chicken. It cooked about five hours and that's what it looks like. So if you're afraid like, oh my gosh, it doesn't look like it absorbed any of the flavor and that is the broth, I want you to add everything back in here and mix it up. I know when you initially like take off the lid, it's gonna look watery, but trust me, once you break it down and you mix it in, it's gonna thicken up. So let me show you. Okay. So then you just go through. I turned up my crock pot off now. If you were gonna like serve this up to company right away, you just keep it on warm. But boom, it's all set up. I shred the chicken with a fork. If you like to use the blender method, you can do that. But that's it. Let me just mix it up real good. Juicy, full of flavor, super moist. I know that's not a good word that people like to hear, but come on, there we go. Absolute perfection. I wanna just go over quickly what we've made today. So right here is that chicken. I did go through and try a little bit of it and I felt like it was a little bland. You could have done a little bit more salt, but I wanted to add just I think I added in about a teaspoon more of the Nor Chicken Bouillon just to give it a little bit of flavor. Thought it came out pretty good. Then try it. But sometimes you just gotta do that. You know how it is with crock pot meals. Sometimes you gotta add a little extra seasoning after they cooked. And that's just the way it is. But the chicken came out good. It's not mushy at all. It still has like the texture to it and it's very good. Rhea came up and had a couple of the potatoes. She said these are the best things ever. Highly recommend. And then there's still a few more. And I could always make more of these bags of potatoes were only like a dollar. And they were so easy, you know. And then we have the mashed potatoes, which came out so good. They're like super whipped, which I like. The cilantro lime rice, very good. Just plain pasta. Now you're wondering probably what I do with the pasta. So usually with the pasta, I'll throw it in with some lettuce. And then add my chicken and do kind of like a chopped salad with it. Or you can just add the, um, do like a pasta with some uh, lemon and some Parmesan with the side of your steak or with the side of your fish, whatever the case may be. It's just something I like to have cooked up. I have my salmon, which is looking beautiful. And then I have my steaks. So you're probably wondering what would be my veg for the side. Um, I have shredded lettuce in there. I also have green beans and 
I think I might get some mushrooms later on in the week, but that's about it. So I just try to keep my fresh produce. Um, I try to eat, like I only buy a little bit of it at first. And then if I have to go out and buy more, like midweek, I do that. Because I found if I buy a lot of fresh produce early in the week and I prep it, I don't finish it and I end up tossing it. So the beginning of the week, I'll do like green beans and lettuce. And then later in the week, I think I might do zucchinis with um, mushroom and onion. So just uh, switch it up. Steaks look good. Those are all done. They're sitting and cooking. And that's it. That is what a meal prep looks like. So I was able to cook once and eat multiple times throughout the week. Family approved, super good, super easy. And you're still on track for your goals. You know, nothing is sacrificed. So hopefully you guys did like this video, found it hopeful, found it helpful, found it inspiring, motivating, you name it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to check out Brio. I will leave a link down below. Take care of not only your body, but take care of you. Self-care is internal as well as external, and you are worth it, my friends. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.